Hey there, Bit by Bit AI Squad. How's the world of AI treating you? Today, we're going to dive into the nuts and bolts of installing the Vlad Diffusion tool. But before we plunge in, let's tackle a burning question that's probably been on your mind. Why do I need Vlad Diffusion anyway? Now, according to numerous online forums and debates, it seems like Automatic 11.11 might be slacking a bit, whether in updates, bug fixes, or just keeping up with emerging technology. Enter Vlad's Diffusion, aiming to fill these gaps with frequent updates, prompt bug fixes, and even integrate Storch 2.0 right into your install. Let's break it down together. Over here on the GitHub page for Vlad Diffusion, you'll see a snapshot of the web UI. Notice the sliders and the pre-installed extensions like Control Net and Image Browser LoRa. Yeah, that's some sweet added value. Plus, it's optimized for Torch 2.0 and operates with SDP, making it a dream for low memory cards. You might want to avoid enabling Sformer's post-install though, we've heard it can cause some hiccups. Ready to install? Let's do it step by step. Start by installing Python 3.10.9 instead of 3.10.6. Also, make sure you add Python to the system parts during installation. You'll need Git for Windows 2, Easy PC, and lastly, the cherry on top of the Vlad Diffusion Sunday is the CUDA Toolkit, which I've linked below. Once you're all set up, the next step is setting up Vlad Diffusion itself. I personally suggest creating a dedicated folder in your user directory. Once you've done that, head back to the Vlad Diffusion GitHub page and copy the line we'll use for cloning. Go to the newly created folder, Type cmd in the address bar and hit enter. This will bring up the command window where you can paste in the line and press enter. Just like that. All of the Vlad Diffusion content is cloned into your drive. And we've arrived at installation time. Rather than using launch.py, this time around, we'll use webry.bat as highlighted in the guide. This will set up a virtual Python environment where everything runs smoothly. However, be patient as this process can take some time. If you see any error messages pop up, don't panic. They are typically harmless and won't interrupt the installation process. At one point, you'll be prompted to download the standard model. My advice, go for it. Without this, the web UI won't start. However, you're free to remove it later as I'll show you how to set up the paths so you can load all the models from your automatic 11.11 folder. Once everything's set up, your local address will appear. You can copy this link to your browser and hit enter to open and load the page. Now, let's tweak some settings to get you up and running. First, navigate to the settings section. There are a few key options I recommend altering to ensure a smooth Vlad diffusion experience. The user interface options on the left provide various UI designs. Pick one you like. Preview it. And hit apply settings. You might have to restart the CMD window for changes to take effect. Next, within the quick settings, enable the SD underscore VAE. After a start, this gives you a quick selector for the VAE you're using at the top. Another handy option to enable is send size when sending prompt or image to another interface. This is especially useful if you are frequently sending from text to image, or vice versa. Under System Paths, ensure all the paths for your stable diffusion checkpoints and VAE files are correctly set. This will allow the web UI to load all models directly from there, saving you the hassle of having to copy or re-download them. 
If you prefer working with PNG files over JPEGs, you can alter the standard file format in the images section. Additionally, under live previews, adjust the steps to render until you see a preview according to your preference. Now, let's not forget about the built-in image browser. To access your generated images, you might need to click on first page each time you go to the tab. If you want to delete any images, simply select them and hit delete. Lastly, built directly into the interface, you have clip skip. Depending on your model, you might want to alter the clip skip settings. As a standard, I suggest leaving it at 1. But for some models, like Craft Animated, a setting of 2 could yield better results. Oh, and don't forget to check out the script section. One script in particular to look out for is the accept silent plot. This allows for some cool search and replace functionalities that can really streamline your work. There you have it, friends, a complete Vlad Diffusion setup guide to enhance your AI adventures. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Bit by Bit AI for more AI tips and tricks. For exclusive AI insights delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our email list at link slash bitbybitai. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.